The far side of the moon hides a gigantic secret, because experts have actually identified a massive mass anomaly here below the surface, which has fueled the wildest speculations and theories. But does it really have to be the secret base of a hidden lunar civilization? Or can the existence of this enigmatic structure also be explained in a less outlandish way? Our view of our constant companion is limited. No matter how much we crane our necks, it is simply not possible to see the mysterious far side of the moon from Earth. The reason for this is that our satellite has a locked rotation and, as a result, it always presents us with the same side. But how did the moon come to be so shy of showing us its dark side? Well, the experts point out that our satellite has only gradually acquired this property. Shortly after its formation, the moon rotated much faster. But the Earth's gravitational pull slowed it down to such an extent that its rotational speed eventually aligned with its orbital speed. And so it was that for thousands of years, humanity could only speculate about what lies on the far side of the moon. But as we know today, we have somewhat different means of exploring the much cited dark side of the moon. But long before the January 2019 flyby by the Chang'e 4, the first ever spacecraft to land on the far side of the moon, experts knew that the far side is not as dark as it is often said to be. In reality, the dark side goes through exactly the same lunar phases as the front side, only in the opposite order. In fact, the far side of the Earth actually has a higher reflectivity than the opposite side. And every time the moon appears in the sky as a faint new crescent, its far side shines brighter than the front side at full moon. But aside from the similarities in terms of moon phases, there is no question that the two faces of our satellite could not be more different in other respects. However, we have only been aware of this fact since 1959, when the Soviet Luna 3 probe took the first pictures of the far side of the moon, finally completing the face of the celestial body. The differences between the sides are mainly related to the so-called mare, the dark, solidified, lava-covered lowlands that make up almost a third of the surface of the side facing the Earth and are much less common in the opposite region. At the same time, there are also far fewer lunar mountains and riles here than on the front side, and indeed, researchers believe that they have finally solved the mystery of the different faces of the moon. But more about that in a moment, because first, we want to discuss the discovery of the huge mass anomaly mentioned at the beginning, which presents the experts with no less of a mystery. What lies on the far side of the moon? For many travelers, Hawaii is probably the ultimate vacation destination. No wonder, because the epitomous main island, which covers almost 10,400 square kilometers, not only attracts visitors with its picturesque black sand beaches, but also houses one of the largest active volcanoes in the world, Mauna Loa. But what does an idyllic island paradise in the Pacific have to do with a confusing mass anomaly on the far side of the moon? Well, it's quite simply, as Peter B. James of Baylor University in Texas is quoted as saying, Imagine a pile of metal five times larger than the main island of Hawaii and bury it underground. That's roughly the unexpected mass we detected. When it comes to the keyword metal pile, one or the other creative mind might quickly think of a colossal spaceship or a hidden underground base, but unfortunately it's not quite that outlandish. To understand the background of the unexpected mass, however, we first have to consider where it was actually detected. After all, the corresponding gravity measurements do not detect it at just any old point, but at the South Pole Atkin Basin, the largest preserved impact crater in the entire solar system. There is no doubt that this crater, with an incredible extent of over 2,000 kilometers, still bears witness to a brutal cosmic collision. However, the question of how exactly the violent crash occurred, an estimated 4.3 billion years ago, and what influence it had on the further development of the then young moon is much more controversial. To take another look at the impact, and at the same time to explore the nature of the subsoil at the lunar south pole, Peter James and his team evaluated the data from the GRAIL mission. As part of this mission, two probes had flown to the moon in September 2011 to examine its gravitational field and anomalies 
thus opening up new insights into the internal structure of our satellite. The researchers then combined the GRAIL data with those from the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter, which has been mapping the entire lunar surface in high resolution since 2009. And as already mentioned, the experts' investigation brought a gigantic mass anomaly hundreds of kilometers below the South Pole Atkin Basin to light. And by that, we really mean gigantic. In fact, it not only reaches a depth of 200 kilometers, but also weighs an incredible 2.18 trillion tons. But what on earth is it? Well, unfortunately, scientists still can't answer this fundamental question with absolute certainty. But that doesn't mean there aren't any plausible theories. Where speculation about secret moon bases has been ruled out, researchers point to the metallic core of the chunk that created the colossal impact basin billions of years ago. In fact, the asteroid's core could still be embedded in the moon's mantle. After all, computer simulations have shown that such an iron-nickel core could plunge deep into the upper mantle during a collision without necessarily sinking into the moon's core. Furthermore, the extreme weight of the asteroid core could pull the bottom of the crater down into the depths, causing it to sink by an additional kilometer. However, it should be noted at this point that experts are also discussing a second theory, which is based less on the core of an asteroid and more on a huge, clumped accumulation of dense oxides that once accumulated on the Moon's south pole when the original magma ocean cooled and solidified. Has the mystery of the different halves of the Moon been solved? Well, possibly yes. But before we go into the relevant research results in more detail, Let's do a quick head count, because if we're being precise, the term halves is not entirely correct in this context. Due to the Moon's elliptical orbit, which is tilted at 5 degrees, only 41% of the Moon's surface is visible from Earth. And while you can impress your friends with this knowledge at the next party, experts have since discovered that the two lunar regions not only have an unequal distribution of Maria, but also that the crust of the far side of the Moon is significantly thicker than the near side. On the other hand, the crust on the near side is peppered with unusually high proportions of radioactive thorium, potassium, phosphorus, and rare earth elements. But how the so-called creep terrain was created and what triggered the volcanism on the lunar surface is still not fully understood. Some researchers estimate that the differences in the Moon's crust are due to the tidal forces of the Earth. Others, however, consider it more likely that we are dealing here with the direct effects of a cataclysmic impact. Matt Jones from Brown University in Providence is one of these researchers. Together with his colleagues, he investigated the impact of the immense heat of the impact at the Moon's south pole on the entire celestial body. And with good reason. For it just so happened that the oversized crater was located almost exactly at the point opposite the creep terrain. The corresponding reconstruction of the impact was in turn based on geophysical models of the early moon's interior, and it provided the exciting insight that the rendezvous with the 100-kilometer asteroid could indeed have caused a thermal anomaly in the mantle that significantly influenced the moon's further development for hundreds of millions of years. More specifically, the impact unleashed an immense blast of heat that spread through the Moon's interior to the opposite side, ultimately reaching the area known today for its many Maria and the Creep terrain. Similar to a surfer riding a wave, titanium-rich magma accumulations were also carried towards the Earth's surface. According to the simulation, the heat and subsequent mantle convection would have been enough to explain the special enrichment of the Creep terrain and the basalt rock of the Mare. But that's not all. The asteroid's rendezvous with the South Pole may even have triggered the volcanism and the formation of the Maria in the first place. The impact probably concentrated heat-generating elements on the Moon's near side, and the combination of radioactive heating and increased mantle convection may have literally ignited the upper mantle of the area facing the Earth. In turn, the hot magma was then able to pour out onto the surface in the form of huge eruptions. And according to the researchers, the first eruptions occurred about 200 million years after the asteroid impact, while the most extreme phase of the Mare volcanism occurred another 300 to 500 million years later. And just as one would with proper crane locations, the evidence is thickening 
that the South Pole Atkin Basin and the nature of the moon's near side are directly connected, and that the experts have finally found the solution to one of the most tantalizing lunar mysteries of all. And we've finally found the solution to how you'll never miss a new video from us again. Just click on the thumbs up and subscribe to stay up to date from now on. See you soon!